All right, here we go again, and today we're going to talk about constant acceleration. This is the next step after velocity. The goal for today is just to understand acceleration. I'll define acceleration here as the word that we use to describe how quickly the velocity of an object is changing. The equation that we'll use to describe acceleration is acceleration equals delta v over delta t. Remember, delta means change in. It's always final minus initial, so we're saying the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by a time interval, the final time minus the initial time. I'll remind you that we can always use an equation to come up with the units for a new variable. In this case, in the numerator, we have units of meters per second from velocity. In the denominator, we have units of seconds. If we put this all together, we get meters per second squared which is the preferred unit for us to use for acceleration. Remember that I can look at my mathematics and decide that acceleration must be a vector. The velocity vector on the right hand side is being operated on by a scalar and that means that I have to have another vector on the left hand side. Arguably the most famous acceleration that we have is that due to gravity. On Earth it is 9.8 meters per second squared down. Let us take a look at an example here where we have a car. Let's say this car is moving at a constant velocity to the right, as indicated by my vector. I can add to this and I can say that the velocity vector has a magnitude of 20 meters per second. That's about 45 miles per hour. And don't forget that the, the arrow here actually shows the direction of my vector so I don't have to say it every time. I get asked the question, what is the acceleration for a car that's traveling at a constant velocity. Many of you may recognize that there is no acceleration at all, or we would say the acceleration is zero. Remember, acceleration is defined as a change in velocity over a change in time. If there is no change in velocity, there can be no acceleration. Let's take a slightly different example where I have a car that is coming to a nice full and complete stop at a stop sign, I can still assign a velocity vector to this. This time I'm saying it's traveling at 10 meters per second, but I'm identifying that it's slowing down. This does imply something about acceleration. What it tells me is that my acceleration must be in the opposing direction, because any time I have a velocity vector and an acceleration vector, but they are pointing in opposite directions, it means my object has to be slowing down. If I take a slightly different example where once the car has passed the stop sign and it starts accelerating again, this time I'm using that word to mean that yes, it is actually picking up speed, I can still assign it a velocity vector. I picked the same velocity vector I had before, 10 meters per second, but this time I'm saying it speeds up. This again implies something about my acceleration. What it tells me is that my acceleration vector is in the same direction as the velocity vector. That is a requirement for an object to be speeding up. This is a very crucial idea, so let's quickly put it all together. If I have a situation where the velocity vector is in the same direction as the acceleration, the object is required to speed up. If I have the other situation where my velocity vector is in an opposing direction to the acceleration, I am required to slow down. This must happen and it's very important to remember this. I want to turn to a website now that is free for everybody to use, a great website called FET out of the University of Colorado that has many, many different chemistry, physics, biology simulations that can help us to understand different parts of science. What we're looking at now is a very particular simulation from the FET website called Moving Man. I have the ability to change the position, the velocity, and the acceleration of this little person. I'm going to go ahead and click these check boxes, which will allow me to see some vectors. Just to be able to take a look at what's going on, let me go ahead and give a 1 meter per second velocity with nothing else and hit play you can see that I have a tiny little red velocity vector in there and my little moving man is moving at a constant velocity that is no acceleration. I can go and let's reset. This time I'm going to give a 1 meter per second squared acceleration and we'll hit play and we'll see what happens. You see that the moving man starts to pick up speed, starts to accelerate. Let's again reset. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move my position all the way to the left just to get some room. I'm, I want to show the velocity vector and the acceleration vector. I'm going to give a positive 8 meters per second velocity. I'm going to give a negative 2 acceleration, negative 2 meters per second squared. Notice that I have a leftward pointing acceleration but a rightward pointing velocity. That means by requirement, as soon as I hit the play button, this little guy is required to start slowing down. And in fact, that is what we see. At one point, he will even stop. Now they are pointing in the same direction. The velocity vector is pointing in the same direction as the acceleration, and it's required that he actually start to pick up speed. Let's watch this again. Slowing down with opposing vectors. Velocity goes to zero and now picking up speed again. Notice that that acceleration vector was constant through this entire thing. If I want to show a slightly different variation of what we just saw, I'll still put my little person over to the left. I want to show my vectors. I'll give us that same positive 8 meters per second. This time I will give negative 4 meters per second squared hit play. This is just a larger magnitude acceleration. You see it just doesn't take as long for the speed to turn this guy all the way around. Let's take a moment to think about another example where we have acceleration. What about throwing a ball into the air? Let's split this up into three different phases. The first phase would be the ball traveling up after it's left my hand and at one point I'm going to want to ask what is the acceleration. Phase two is going to be the situation where the ball is at the highest point. For a brief moment in time, the velocity of that ball is actually zero meters per second. Again, I'll ask what is the acceleration. And for the third phase, let's consider what happens when the ball is traveling back towards the hand. It has not reached the hand yet, but it is just falling back towards Earth. We have these three phases of throwing a ball into the air and I've asked the question, what is the acceleration at each of these points? At this point you should go ahead and pause the video and try to come up with your own accelerations at each phase here. This has been shown to be very important in the learning process for understanding how this works. Okay, now that I've given you a little bit of time, let's go ahead and see what we've got here for phase one. As the ball is traveling up, after it's left the hand, what is the acceleration? The acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared down. For phase two, what is the acceleration? Right when the velocity is equal to zero, that's the highest point for the ball. The acceleration is still 9.8 meters per second squared down. And for phase three, when the ball is traveling down back towards the hand, again, the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared down. You will notice something very important. The acceleration due to gravity is always down and always constant. It has been identified by many researchers that there's a very common misconception here. This statement, the acceleration due to gravity is always down and constant, makes sense to people. They agree with that. They wouldn't dispute that. But when you go back to this previous page, if you ask this question here, people often confuse what's happening with the velocity with what's happening with the acceleration. Remember, velocity is separate from acceleration. Just because the ball is traveling up in phase one does not imply anything about the acceleration. When the ball is stopped in the air in phase two, that does not require the acceleration to go to zero. The acceleration is always down and constant. If we go back to this FET simulation that I showed before, I picked these parameters for a very particular reason. Rotate the screen counterclockwise by 90 degrees and you can see that the motion of the moving man here is identical to a ball that would be thrown straight up in the air and then travels back down. I'm showing my constant acceleration as being negative 2 meters per second squared to the left, but this is identical in concept to as if the acceleration were due to gravity at negative 9.8 meters per second squared, or that is to say 9.8 meters per second squared down. Gravity does not stop or 
change 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 whatever works To recap, let's look at the important points. First, acceleration describes how quickly velocity changes. Acceleration is a vector. If velocity and acceleration oppose each other in direction, the object slows down. If velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, the object speeds up. For objects in free fall with no air resistance, acceleration is always 9.8 meters per second squared down no matter what the ball is actually doing in the air being going up stationary at the top or coming back down I've included the information for how to get to the FET website below I encourage you to go there and play with moving man or any other simulations that will help you understand the physics that you're learning about and remember if you think you got it you should gently let your computer know